This is video part 4 for the 1971 Zenith color set. And in video part 3, we we're just getting ready to power the set up with this substituted 4700 Pico Fair disc cap. And the reason we got that subbed in there is because we had a 40k ohm resistance reading across C297, which is totally unacceptable. You should never ever have a resistance reading across a disc cap especially when you got it disconnected from the circuit. So it's definitely a leaker. So we're assuming that's what's causing the voltage to be dragged down. So now all we need to do is power to set up and see what happens. There we go. Got a nice perfect raster right there just showed up. Nice clean snow. It's bright. That's perfect. Let's get a quick voltage check now. Remember, we were supposed to have 120 volts on pin number 3 of the horizontal output tube. We only had like 40 volts. Let's see what we got now. Now that the set's working, we got the new cap in. There we go. 117 volts. No problem. So that was definitely the problem there, was that 4700 Pico Farad cap. See what kind of brightness we got. Tube cuts off well, gets nice and bright. This TV should really work good. And you saw in video part two how handy it was to have that B and K analyst. The ability to inject that plate voltage into the horizontal output tube greatly simplified our service procedures because it cleared everything past the plate of the horizontal output tube from being defective. Consequently, we don't have to make voltage checks in those regions area either, so you save a lot of time. We had the grid voltage, which meant the oscillator was working, so it told us that the problem was somewhere within this parameter, somewhere in the horizontal output tube circuit. That was a nice easy repair. Voltage checks are the way to go. And look, it was even a rear, uh, uh, an interesting part too that it failed. Disc caps rarely fail. Normally it's a resistor. And I'll be honest, most of the time when you got problems with these sets, it doesn't really end up being a tube. It'll end up being a bad resistor or maybe an electrolytic capacitor. But nevertheless, we got it fixed. It works good. So all we got to do now is just put the easy service plate back on the bottom of the cabinet, flip the TV back upright, and do your general checks. Do your grayscale check, purity, do your convergence, check your high voltage of course, and uh, vertical linearity and size. Make sure everything's up to par. And if that's the case, you can go ahead and put this TV to everyday use. And in my opinion, this set's from 71. The actual filter can electrolytics hold up pretty good on these. And those are these right here. I checked the ESR on those anyway, just to make sure they're alright. But they're not worth replacing on these because they hold up real well. So, get a good look at that chassis again. That's like artwork. That's a real Zenith TV right here. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Truly a slogan that had meaning. 
We need to preserve these old American TVs, anything vintage American electronics. They represent a time in the United States where we dominated the field of engineering and development and production of electronic products. It's a time we might never see again. And it's sad. So if you have an old Zenith color set and you got problems with it, feel free to ask me questions. I'd be more than happy to help. I have all kinds of service data for these. So I can go all the way back to the 29JC20 up to around 1980 models. So there's no problem as far as service literature is concerned. I live in Zenith country here. I'm in Chicago. So I got every bit of information available what's left, I think. So please keep continuing to watch DRH 4683 TV repair videos. And that's it.